happened to me, I, I, I travel all the time. I, I, it still annoys me that it happened to me that someone suckered me in like that. And, um, and then, you know, they, basically, they, 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 I'm not sure if they were trying to kill me or not, but they went very close to doing it. He could have stopped breathing if he'd been on medication for a heart problem. He could, he could have had a heart attack. Anything could have happened. And if we hadn't have found him, would he have woken up? I don't know. Ray Bond, motorcycle rider, family man, successful businessman and long-time Singapore resident. For two decades he's travelled almost constantly throughout Asia, expanding his lighting control business. He saw himself as a streetwise road warrior. But then he came badly unstuck. It's uh, if it can save one or two people from this happening to, and if it can help them get caught, great. Um, I, I, you know, I'd hate to see them kill someone, but you know. It's mid-May, and Ray Bond arrives at the Five Star Park Lane Hotel in Jakarta. He's running late as he checks in after arriving from Singapore, and has missed an appointment with a regular client. Undeterred, Ray agrees to meet the customer at another central Jakarta hotel that evening. The Park Lane's closed circuit security camera records him exchanging money before leaving. Ray gets a cab to Le Meridien, a hotel where he's often stayed in the past. He heads down the escalator into the basement Tigger Puller Bar. Here he buys a beer and waits for his associate. I was standing near the door waiting for him. I was a bit early. Um, then, you know, I was halfway through my beer when uh, the guy next to me, who I didn't even see come up, um, clinked his glass on mine and said cheers. And I said cheers back and then he started to talk to me. Um, told me his name was Aaron. Uh, he was 41 uh, from Kuala Lumpur and um, introduced me to his girlfriend who I who he said was a Thai and her name was Jasmine so yeah I, I halfway through my beer and I decided to, I needed to go to the toilet so I left my beer w walked off the toilet came back about probably two minutes later and stood stood back where I was and uh, they were still talking to me uh, finished my beer off uh, I know a little bit bit about rehypnol now I mean I've been looking it up and it has no taste, it's colourless and odourless, so it would be very easy to put it in a beer and you wouldn't even know it was there. And then they can tell you basically to do anything and that's what they would have done. There are two bars in the hotel basement. As the drug begins to take effect, Ray checks out the inner bar to see if he can find his client. Then he returns to find the girl Jasmine and the man Aaron waiting for him. And he had two beers. Uh, the bar was only a few metres away, so I actually saw him get the beers. Uh, he offered me a offered me a draft beer. Uh, the last thing I remember is uh, taking the first sip out of that beer, and then I've got no real memory. Probably five days later. While Ray can't remember what happens after that sip of beer, he and his wife Helen have pieced together what follows next from security camera clips. I cannot remember this. I, the palm tree I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, this is just so that's, foreign that's to me. That's right. Now they took out the different... The clips reveal him returning to the Park Lane Hotel about an hour later, accompanied by the couple from Le Meridien. I look perfectly normal, I look happy, I'm talking to my two best friends, it looks like. And we go off, off we go downstairs, I, I assume to a bar downstairs. There's a bar in the basement of the hotel I'm staying. Um, and I've looked at that probably a hundred times and it's not me. I cannot be, uh, I cannot remember one single piece of that. Um, it's not something I would have done. Uh, it's, it scares me that this part of my memory is just not there. It's just, uh, it's missing. The next security video shows the trio entering the lift lobby a short time later. Except now, Ray is starting to look worse for wear. Looking back, he believes a couple have now given him a second, more powerful drug. 
The trio take the lift to Ray's room on the 11th floor, where he passes out from a massive dose of the sedative benzodiazepine. Aaron and Jasmine don't emerge for several hours. And when they do, Aaron is wearing one of Ray's shirts, and that's not all. I lost an almost new laptop computer, a uh, almost new mobile phone, a PDA phone. Um, I lost uh, a camera and um, some clothing, uh, a gold chain given to me by my wife on our wedding, plus cash out of my wallet and my credit cards. The security video shows the couple leaving the hotel, but not before one last insult. First of all, you can't work out what they're doing. Then you see that um, Aaron has my camera, and he's actually taking photos of his girlfriend with my camera in the lobby of the hotel. You know, the Highland using my camera to take photos. Um, you know, it's, you know, as I said, at the time I really wanted to find them. Um, I mean, I'd like to have 10 minutes with him alone. Um, uh, you know, as I said, I, I, this guy nearly killed me. The final security video shows Aaron and Jasmine leaving the hotel in a taxi. Shows about $4,000 on each card. Um, Looking back, Ray now knows what they did next. His bank statements reveal their plunder of his three credit cards. First, the couple book into the Crown Plaza, another opulent Jakarta five-star. They enjoy room service while they wait for the shops to open. Then it's off to the Ritzy Plaza Indonesia shopping centre. They spend $900 at a department store, $277 at a spree, get themselves new jeans, a mobile phone and some shoes. But the big ticket item is over $4,000 worth of jewellery. In all, more than 10,000 Australian dollars is rung up in five or six hours. Combine that with the stolen equipment and the couple have stripped almost $20,000 from their victim. All the time the two criminals are shopping, back at the Park Lane, the comatose Ray Bond is in serious trouble. Tess will later reveal he's ingested more than 10 times the medical dose of benzodiazepine. His blood pressure has plummeted and as he dehydrates, the risk of heart attack is increasing. In Singapore, Ray's wife Helen gets the first inkling something is wrong. I got a call from Ray's secretary Vivian about 10 past 12 on the Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, on the Wednesday. And she said to me, where's he staying? And I said, as far as I know, Ray's staying at the Meridian Hotel. She said, because he was supposed to call someone and make a time to meet them in the afternoon, he hasn't called them. That was the first I knew. Vital time is lost while it's established Ray is staying at the Park Lane. The hotel confirms he's there, but initially refuses to check on him because his Do Not Disturb sign is switched on. There's a Do Not Disturb sign up. We can't go in. We can't go in for two days, so they tell us. So we ring back and we say, well, you've got to go in because something's wrong. By this time, Buddy, the brother-in-law of Ray's Singapore business partner, has been enlisted to help. He takes a cab to the park lane, arriving around 3.30. Uh, by the time I arrive at the hotel, about, uh, I try to knock at the door. There are uh, security guy already over there. There are also uh, uh, a doctor and also some people from the hotel try to check uh, what is happening on Ray because uh, before they already tried to enter the room by the time Ray is still sleeping and he couldn't wake up at all. Buddy convinces them to check again. He finds the room trashed, the safe open with only Ray's passport remaining. They manage to wake Ray but he's badly disoriented. The hotel people asked uh, the doctor to check on uh, his condition first and then they found out that actually uh, his, uh, his blood pressure is quite low. 
Buddy rushes Ray here to this nearby hospital where he's put on a drip. The doctors confirm he's been heavily drugged. Uh, according to the doctor, is uh, if uh, nobody wakes him up, it's uh, very dangerous because his blood pressure is, uh, will go down and down because he didn't consume anything at all. He will keep sleeping for two to three days. So it's uh, maybe uh, something bad happening will happen to him. So what um, what kind of debt of gratitude do you think you owe you Buddy then? Huge. I mean, we are, I think we owe him big time. A urine test taken back in Singapore reveals that four days after being drugged, Ray still has almost six times the recommended dose of benzodiazepine in his bloodstream. Two months after the incident, he's gone public to warn others. Um, I, I, you know, I'd hate to see them kill someone, but you know, someone with a heart condition, they, you know, they feed them ten times the amount of diazepine, and you know, they don't wake up. As for Aaron and Jasmine, their trail finally runs cold at the Crown Plaza Hotel the evening after their shopping spree. There, posing as Ray Bond and partner, they use his business card to introduce themselves to their next victim, another Australian.